Hey guys, Omar here, and welcome to part two of color management. In the first episode, I'll link it up below. We talked about how your camera lies to you, and some of us maybe want to know what real colors look like. Uh, and of course, people argue that their camera is better than real life, <laughs> which I totally understand. You don't need to do any of this if you're happy with what colors you're getting from your Adobe profiles and of course from your camera. But this process we're talking about becomes important if you start doing a little bit more professional work. Maybe you're a graphic designer, maybe you're starting to print your artwork and you want a lot of control over all those colors. So that's what we're talking to and that's who we're talking to. Okay, so I've always calibrated my monitor with the Spider 5. I love this thing, I've used it all the time. The computer's always reminding me, have you calibrated, have you calibrated, have you calibrated? And I always say no because it always takes kind of a long time to calibrate with the Spider 5, but it's a great device. When the company Data Color said, hey, we wanna send you a brand new Spider X, I was kinda of like, I don't really need that. I got my Spider 5, but the person I was talking to says, you know, try it out, and it's a lot faster. And what ends up happening is, since it's so fast, you actually will calibrate your monitor more um, frequently instead of putting it off. And I find that's true. If something's a little quicker, I'll probably do it instead of just putting it off. Now you can, you could calibrate. You could calibrate. You could calibrate. Calibrate. That's my new word, calibrate. You can calibrate your monitor a couple different ways. Uh, the old way I used to do it is on a Mac, you can actually go in and change your warmth. You can change your contrast and sort of eyeballing what you wanted. Uh, not recommended at all because you don't know you don't, your eyes aren't as sophisticated as software as far as knowing what real colors are. The second thing is you can download and look up a profile for your monitor. That totally will get you in the ballpark. The only issue with that is even monitors in the same uh, shipping year and the same model, they all have variances. So it's cool to do the third one, which is using an actual device, a uh, calorimeter or some kind of device that can actually use software to get your colors right. All right, the Spider 5 versus the Spider X Elite. Is it worth upgrading, number one? Well, it depends who you are. If you have tons of patience <laughs> and you are okay with older calibration technology, the Spider X is completely fine. You really may not need to upgrade depending on your monitor and your needs. It's totally still a great device, so I love it. Um, however, the perks of the Spider X Elite are hard to ignore. Uh, number one, if you project your images, um, the new, let me show you the Spider. The Spider 5 has this, so see the Spider 5 has this technology, this little net technology, which goes on your screen. Well, the new Spider has this, uh, you know, optical little guy that can read light. And so what's neat about that is you can now calibrate mom, mom, <laughs> because you can calibrate projectors. You can actually, it can see the light from projectors and you can get, uh, images that match your screen and match your projector for those slideshows you still showed your family, right? Of all your images of the year, you still do that, right? The other huge benefit of this dude right here is speed. I tested the uh, Spider 5 and sat through my calibration process that I, you know, ignore to do every month because it takes a while. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's like six, seven minutes you're waiting around for the uh, calibration to finish. This guy, under a minute, I got to calibrate the monitor, recalibrate it completely. Another cool feature of the Data X is it lets you rate and grade your monitor, which I've never done before, but you can find these dead zones in your monitor. You can find how color accurate is it out of the box. So it's kind of nice to, you know, you should go to all your friends' houses and be like, can I see your monitor? All right, so what does the extra 100 give you? The features for the Elite that are cool, it does the projector uh, calibration. It also will give you soft proofing if you want to print. It has its own software to check papers and stuff. Although you can do that in Lightroom as well. This guy's a little better for calibrating for any videographers or video work, any kind of motion. And a cool feature, it allows you to do what's called studio match. So if you're in an environment with attached monitors, this guy can calibrate the monitors that are attached to the main computer. All right, let's calibrate the monitor really quick. I'll show you how fast it is. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is start your software. So you have to let your uh, monitor warm up. You have to make sure there's no light falling on there. Now there is light falling on my monitor, but I'm gonna leave that so I can show you 
uh, what you should do. Okay, now we attach the spider to the computer and we hit next. Okay, next it asks you to choose what kind of monitor you have. And uh, something that they maybe should add in the future, it'd be a nice feature to see, is maybe a database where they can update it and have all monitors in there so that you can choose your monitor and it will know what it's going to do. Uh, you have to read this and figure out which monitor you have. You may need to look it up. So I find that a little annoying, but for me personally, it was easy because it tells you that Apple computers after a certain year are wide LED. Now you can recalibrate your monitor, you can check how accurate it is, or you could do a full calibration. And so we're gonna do that. All right, here the Spider X will actually measure the ambient room uh, light falling on the screen. So I'm gonna put this dude right here and I am going to hit next. Now it's measuring it and it says your room light is very high, which is totally true. I have the window and I also have a light shining over here. This is not recommended. And so now we're going to recommend target settings. It will give you recommendations for your room brightness. And what's cool is you hit next and it tells you, gives you a little warning that says stay at your computer because you're gonna have to work a little bit. You pop this guy off, put it on your screen, and you gotta lean back, lean back, lean back, just like that, just so that it's touching the screen. And once you're ready to go, you hit next, and it is doing its calibration stuff, but it's gonna stop at a certain point and ask you to sort of change the brightness of the screen, okay? And that's this part right here. So you're gonna hit it, this little thing, this little window tells you to hit update as you change the brightness. So I'm gonna go up in brightness and hit update. The line went above, I'm gonna hit down one, boom. It fell in the parameters in these little green guys. So I'm gonna hit continue. And this is where it went super fast. Okay, it's done. After a few seconds, it's done. And then it asks you, hey, how do you wanna save it? and it gets confusing. You can actually do multiple, this one I would call bright room <laughs> uh, because it's so bright in here, but you can do multiple calibrations like an evening one and a daytime bright sunlight one, and then you can change your, um, your screen display for the situation. So I put the date and I put daylight there. And for calibration reminder, you should calibrate every few weeks to a month or so, but <laughs> all right, I'll put a month. I had never checked there because I hate reminders. And congratulations, you have your display. You can't really see it on the screen recording, but you can see it changing here. Uncalibrated, calibrated. Now, if you've never worked with a calibrated monitor, the first thing you notice when you calibrate it is most monitors are cooler. So it takes a little getting used to. Uh, the, amount, the monitor will actually become warmer. And the other thing you have to get used to is working in dim conditions. Your brightness should be at least halfway or lower when you're working on images. I used to work on super bright all the way on, and that's not how you should be editing your images, okay? And lastly, it shows you your display and what color space it falls in. It gives you all these little doohickeys. So like my Mac is 90% of Adobe RGB. It's 100% sRGB, and you can test different monitors here. All right, so step one was calibrate your camera, and step two is calibrate your monitor. Even if you're not gonna calibrate your camera, calibrate your monitor, because that will show you your real Fuji colors, Sony colors, and Canon colors that you love, as opposed to incorrect ones. All right, I'll see you guys next time.